Vietnam's opposition is invalid and the construction of the Dekong Funan Canal has officially started. What does it mean for China? Recently, the long-awaited Dekong Funan Canal has finally started construction and the whole country of Cambodia is boiling. For Cambodia, this canal will become a major turning point for the country to get rid of Vietnam's constraints. So, what is the special value of this canal? What does it mean for China? Let us learn more about it in this video. According to reports, at 9 a.m. on August 5th, the construction ceremony of the Dekong Funan Canal project in Cambodia, undertaken by China, was finally held. On the day of the ceremony, Cambodia had a paid holiday for one day. More than 20,000 Cambodians from all walks of life participated in the groundbreaking ceremony. The Prime Minister of Cambodia and the First Lady personally pressed the start button. The scene was filled with gongs and drums and firecrackers. At this moment, the Cambodian people finally took their destiny into their own hands. In his speech, Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Mane said that the Dekong Funan Canal will be able to release Cambodia's huge development potential, lead Cambodia to prosperity and glory, and benefit future generations. Cambodian media also gave high praise to the construction of the Dekong Funan Canal. The Dekong Funan Canal is an artificial canal running from north to south. The starting point of the canal is located in Pre Kampel, southeast of the Cambodian capital. It passes through the four provinces of Kandal, Takeo, Kampot and Kep, and finally goes out to sea from Kep port. The canal is 180 kilometers long and connects the Mekong River, Tunnel Sap Lake, Tunnel Basak River and other waters through artificial means. Three navigation stations and 11 cross-river bridges will be built along the way. The river is designed as a two-way channel with a width of 100 meters and a water depth of 5.4 meters, which can accommodate ships of 3,000 tons. The project is expected to cost 1.7 billion US dollars and take four years to complete in 2028. During the third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation in October last year, Cambodia signed an investment framework agreement with China for the canal project. On May 30th this year, Cambodia announced the construction of the Dekong Funan Canal. Then on August 5th, the project held a groundbreaking ceremony as scheduled. It can be said that the whole process from project planning to signing the agreement and then to the official start of construction was very fast, which fully reflects the importance Cambodia attaches to the project. It can be said that as Cambodia's largest infrastructure project to date, the Dekong Funan Canal is as important as the Grand Canal to China and the Suez Canal to Egypt. How can a canal make Cambodia so highly regarded and at the same time make Vietnam, a close neighbor of Cambodia, extremely unhappy? Let's start with the geographical situation facing Cambodia. Cambodia is located on the north bank of the Gulf of Thailand. It is a coastal country with a coastline of about 460 kilometers. However, there are very few rivers in the country that flow into the Gulf of Thailand, and all of them are very small and cannot provide support for shipping. The only river in Cambodia that can be called a big river is the Mekong River. The Mekong River originates from the northeast slope of the Tangula Mountains in China. It is called the Lonsong River in China. After leaving the country, it flows through Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia and Vietnam in the Indochina Peninsula. It is 4,909 kilometers long. Among them, Cambodia and Vietnam are located in the lower reaches of the Mekong River, and 33% of Cambodia's cargo exports need to rely on the Mekong River. 
However, the nine outlets of the Mekong River are all in Vietnam, which leads to Cambodia's bulk trade imports and exports, which need to pass through Vietnam. This means that the process of loading and shipping containers to sea transportation needs to be completed in Vietnam, and Vietnam charges a large amount of handling, warehousing and customs clearance fees, which greatly increases Cambodia's freight costs. It is reported that Vietnam can earn 10 million US dollars from Cambodia every year by relying on the Mekong River estuary, while Cambodia actually exports only more than 2 million tons of goods through the Mekong River. If it were not for the high tolls, Cambodia's foreign trade from the Mekong River would probably be far more than this. In 2009, Cambodia and Vietnam signed the Water Transport Treaty, in which Vietnam granted Cambodian ships the so-called Most Favored Nation treatment and further simplified the relevant customs clearance procedures, but in fact it deepened Cambodia's economic dependence on Vietnam in foreign trade. Now that Cambodia has joined the Belt and Road Initiative, foreign trade transportation will only increase in the future. In this case, if it still relies on the Mekong River to go to the sea, the tolls to be paid to Vietnam will be far more than 10 million US dollars. Moreover, Vietnam has been trying to strengthen its position and influence in Southeast Asia and to form a certain geopolitical restraint on Cambodia by using the Mekong River estuary. In 1994, Vietnam blocked the Mekong River port, causing a shock to Cambodia's foreign trade system. In the future, as Cambodia's independent development capabilities improve, if it continues to rely on the Mekong River outlet, Vietnam will only put more pressure on Cambodia to achieve its own strategic goals. In this case, Cambodia is more determined to get rid of its dependence on Vietnam. It is speculated that after the completion of the Dek Hong Phunan Canal, Cambodia's shipping volume through Vietnam will be reduced by at least 70%, and shipping costs will be reduced by one-third. At the same time, the canal will also bring Cambodia at least $88 million in transportation revenue each year. If it is properly operated, it is expected that the revenue will reach $570 million by 2050. In addition, the Dekong Funan Canal will radiate 1.6 million people along the way and create about 50,000 jobs. Not only that, the canal will also promote the linkage and construction of seaports such as Kep Port and Sihanoukville on the south bank of Cambodia, thereby helping Cambodia to enhance its own maritime influence and competitiveness in global trade. After the completion of the Dek Hong Phunan Canal, Cambodia will have many advantages. The first advantage is that it will give southern Cambodia a large river that runs east-west and is wide enough. Relying on this river with a width of hundreds of meters, it is not so easy for troops coming from the south to march straight into Phnom Penh. It is equivalent to building a strategic barrier for southern Cambodia that is connected by the Tak Chong Phunan Canal and the Cardamom Mountains. Coupled with the barrier of the Mekong River east of Phnom Penh, it can basically ensure the strategic security of Cambodia's political center with Phnom Penh as the core, Cambodia's economic center with Phnom Penh Sihanoukville as the core, and Cambodia's agricultural core with Tunnel Sap Lake as the core. In this sense, a Tak Chong Phunan Canal has improved the security environment of the entire country of Cambodia and ensured Cambodia's geopolitical security. The second advantage is that Cambodia has completely gotten rid of its dependence on the Mekong River's sea route. We mentioned earlier that Cambodia has huge problems in river sea transport. The Mekong River estuary is under the control of Vietnam, 
and Vietnam can just use its control of the Mekong River estuary to restrict Cambodia in the economic field. At present, at least 30% to 40% of Cambodia's external transportation has to pass through Vietnam. Not to mention the transit fee, Vietnam can impose policy and institutional restrictions in the field of transshipment and customs clearance for some export products that compete with Vietnam, intentionally reducing the international competitiveness of Cambodian products and creating favorable conditions for the export of its own competitive products. Now that Cambodia has its own river transport outlet and can run 3,000-ton cargo ships, it can circumvent Vietnam's control over its exports to the greatest extent, which is extremely beneficial to the development of Cambodia's economy. The third advantage is that it has greatly improved the hydrological environment in Cambodia. The reason why Cambodia's Tunnel Sap Lake has been flooded for many years is related to the poor flood discharge in the lower reaches of the Mekong River. To put it bluntly, Vietnam should have taken action to dredge the waterway in the lower reaches of the Mekong River and increase the flood discharge, but now Vietnam is not doing it. China helped Cambodia build the Tak Chong Phunan Canal, as well as supporting ship locks and dams, which can regulate the runoff of the lower reaches of the Mekong River. During the flood season, the dam of the Tak Chong Phunan Canal can be opened to increase the flow of the lower reaches of the Mekong River and allow the accumulated water in the Tunnel Sap Lake to enter the sea as soon as possible. In the dry season, the water level of Tunnel Sap Lake can be regulated by closing the dam. Moreover, China has built a large number of dams on the Lonsong River in the upper reaches of the Mekong River, which can comprehensively regulate the flow of the Mekong River in Cambodia, which is conducive to greatly improving Cambodia's annual waterlogging problem. The fourth advantage is that the super project of the canal actually plays an extraordinary role in consolidating the will of the people, forming a national consensus, and even building a nation-state. In this regard, the Grand Canal built by ancient China can be said to be a typical representative. The same is true for the Dekong Funan Canal built by Cambodia this time. From its name, Funan is the oldest dynasty in Cambodia, and Dekong means vast in Khmer. Therefore, the name of the canal probably means the largest and oldest kingdom of Cambodia. In contrast, the project name we proposed at the beginning was just a Bay's River Waterway Transport Development Project. It is conceivable that this canal is important in Cambodia. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Mane made it very clear at the groundbreaking ceremony of the Dekong Funam Canal that in addition to its economic benefits, the canal will also inspire Cambodia's national unity and patriotism and demonstrate Cambodia's strong national cohesion. It can be said that Cambodia has a very clear view of the significance of the Dekong Funam Canal. The Tak Chong Funan Canal is regarded as a national strategic project by Cambodia and is equally important to China. First, according to the contract, China will undertake the construction, technology and part of the investment of the canal. In exchange, Chinese companies will obtain 49% of the equity of the canal, which means that after the canal is completed in the future, China will collect nearly half of the revenue from it, and also have the right to operate the canal for 50 years. In the future, the combination of China-Laos, China-Laos Cambodia and other railways will be more conducive to China breaking the Malacca dilemma. For a long time? More than 60% of China's foreign trade and more than 80% of its oil imports have been heavily dependent on the Strait of Malacca, but the Strait of Malacca is deeply restricted by the United States. 
This makes the waterway very prone to short-term transportation interruptions due to emergencies, which poses a great security risk to China's energy and trade. Over the years, in order to reduce its dependence on the Strait of Malacca, China has cooperated with South Asia, Southeast Asia and other countries to build multiple transportation channels and avoid the Strait of Malacca as much as possible. Among them, the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor and the China-Myanmar Oil and Gas Pipeline are located on the west side of the Strait of Malacca. Although the Dekong Funan Canal is on the east side of the Strait of Malacca and cannot be used to bypass the Strait of Malacca directly, from the perspective of China's overall strategic layout for the Indochina Peninsula, it can still provide an important option and strong support for China to get rid of the Malacca dilemma. Secondly, Cambodia is an important bridgehead for the implementation of China's Belt and Road Initiative in Southeast Asia, and Cambodia itself has the potential to become a transportation hub in the Indochina Peninsula. Once the Dekong Funan Canal is completed while expanding China-Cambodia trade, it will further promote economic and trade cooperation between China, the Indochina Peninsula, and ASEAN. With the support of economy, trade, transportation, and other aspects, it will help enhance China's influence on the entire Southeast Asia. For China and Cambodia, the Dekong Funan Canal is definitely a major project to open up a win-win situation, but at the same time, the project has also been dissatisfied by other countries. When the Dechong Funan Canal project was first proposed, the United States and Vietnam expressed their firm opposition to the project and raised concerns that the canal might build a military base and that the construction of the canal would affect environmental water resource management. They even asked Cambodia to improve the transparency of the project, but this request was quickly refuted by Cambodia, which emphasized that the canal would not be used for military purposes and would not affect the flow of the Mekong River. Judging from the current progress of the canal, the opposition from the United States and Vietnam has not affected Cambodia's decision-making. What's more, for Vietnam, after the completion of the Dekong Funam Canal, Cambodia's dependence on the Mekong River outlet will be reduced, which will cause Vietnam to lose a key bargaining chip in its geopolitical strategy against Cambodia. However, after Vietnam encountered many setbacks in Japan's construction of the North-South High Speed Railway, it is currently planning to restart the project for the third time and hopes to get help from China. According to the plan, this high-speed railway connecting the north and south of Vietnam will be connected with the China-Laos-Cambodia and China-Thailand railways in the future, thus forming a complete railway closed loop in Indochina. The Dekong Funam Canal will help to further improve the water and land transportation system of Indochina, thereby closely connecting Vietnam with Laos, Thailand, Cambodia and other countries economically, and will also have more positive impacts on Vietnam's future industrial development. Therefore, from a long-term perspective, Vietnam has no reason to oppose the construction of the Dekong Funam Canal. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel for more great content. See you next time.